Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I'm going to talk you through some of the most common scenarios of what to do when your batch fails. The very first thing you should never do is panic or have a knee-jerk reaction, and it definitely does not help if you point the finger directly at your contract manufacturer or formulator, because they're the teams you need to be working with to isolate the issues. The very first thing you should be doing is investigating. First of all, when the formula was created, was stability testing done? Was the method scaled up properly? And were there some checks in bulk manufacture? Let me run you through each of these. So when a formula is created, it's normally created in a lab size, like you've seen in my videos around 200 grams of product is made. Now it's a very big step to take that 200 grams to 200 kilos or more, and you should never make that jump. Unfortunately, we see a lot of brands that simply haven't been informed or choose not to do what is called a pilot or large lab scale batch. So from 200 grams, you should be going to two to four kilos maximum, and again, in a large lab scale situation. This batch is normally used for stability testing. So we take small samples and we put them under varying conditions to test the robustness of the formula. Now, if you've skipped this step, you'll have no evidence to support the robustness of the formulation. And if you paid for your formulation to be developed, your formulator is really only responsible to test the robustness of the formula under one to three months accelerated conditions. Now, if you want my professional opinion, that's not enough assurance to take your product to market. But unfortunately, I see too many brands skip this vital step thinking they'll save money when it only costs them big dollars in the long run. You should get stability testing done on every formulation developed. And as I mentioned, your contract formulator is only responsible to make sure that that formula is robust for one to three months of accelerated testing at the most, unless you pay them extra to do more robust testing. That's a brand responsibility. The next step from a large lab scale batch is to go to what we call pilot production. And this is normally around 40 to 50 kilos of product being made. Again, it's a step I see all too often skipped because brands try to save money. It should instead be part of your development budget and it helps protect against the risk of failed product in the marketplace. Now the reason we run this pilot batch is because there is a big difference in the machinery used between that large lab batch, which was two to four kilos, and your first pilot production batch, which is around 50 kilos. This is the first big step from going from a lab and lab equipment to pilot and manufacturing equipment. This is often when issues get detected. And when it's still only a 50 kilo batch, many times that batch can be saved. Now, let's talk about that big batch that went wrong. If you've done these scale up steps, you probably won't have a large batch fail when the method's been followed correctly. If you've skipped these steps, then it's very questionable as to who is responsible. If your contract manufacturer offered you these steps and you refused them as a brand, they could argue it's your fault and your responsibility because you omitted these vital scale up steps. If they didn't inform you that you needed to do these steps, then they should take responsibility because those steps should be conducted. And many brand owners simply don't know about these scale up steps or their importance. If something goes wrong with that large scale production, it can often be traced back to the pilot or lab scale steps, what went wrong. Now, when the formulation and method is copied exactly in those scale up steps, and there was no issues in the pilot production, 
there will usually be no major issues in the large scale production. And the reason for that is the equipment used to produce 50 kilos of product is usually quite similar, albeit usually much larger, when it comes time to produce 200 kilos or more of product. So let's talk about that batch of failed product. If stability testing was conducted on the formula and it passed, it's not the formula. Something went wrong in manufacture. It could be the method used, it could be the raw materials, or it could be that scale-up was skipped. Was scale-up performed? If there were no issues at the scale-up stage, then there could be a method problem when it gets to large manufacture, or it could be a raw material issue. At least then we've identified the steps we need to target to isolate the cause of the issue. And if you've been a brand owner that simply skipped the steps to save costs, well you're finding out the hard way what you should have done. Don't skip those steps ever. Because one, you could prevent issues from happening. Two, if issues do happen, you can isolate where and hopefully fix them in time before that batch is finished or goes to market. Or three, you'll find out it's a very costly mistake later. So there you have a common summary of what should be done from formulation to full production development to help avoid these sort of issues. There are other scenarios that can occur, of course, but never have a knee-jerk reaction, never point the finger of blame, and work with the formulator and manufacturer to identify what's gone wrong, can the batch be saved, and to make sure it never happens again. I hope this has helped you understand why we recommend stability testing and pilot batches to prevent large-scale issues and to help you also identify who's at fault if, unfortunately, something does go wrong. Happy formulating.